What's up everyone, I'm Calamon Toast, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some insane battles in the Jungle Cup, running a triple Shadow Glass Cannon team with Dragonite, Toxicroak and Excadrill. I actually had a really good run with this team and what I found is that besides a few super hard counter matchups, this team doesn't need to have good alignment but precise energy management is absolutely vital when playing a team like this. I actually feel that unlike other cups we've had recently, this cup isn't super restrictive and you can basically run whatever the heck you want. Obviously the vast majority of the player base is still going to run these same 8-10 to 10 Pokemon, but there are plenty of off meta options that you can run without getting completely steamrolled in every game. Of course we'll have the jungle cup for 2 weeks straight so maybe I'll change my mind towards the end of next week, but for now I am really enjoying it. So with that being said, let's just get straight into the question of the day. What do you think is the strongest closer in the current jungle cup meta? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. I was heading into the first battle, it's Shadow Dragonite into Shadow Steelix. This was the first battle I did with this team, so straight away gonna say swap into my Shadow Toxicroak and we bait out Altaria. Now this is the first time I think I'm using Shadow Toxicroak, so honestly I'm not 100% sure if a Shadow Ball would do enough damage to take them out with the counters there. Possibly not, but the opponent is still going to respect the damage. And at this point, we've got a shield advantage. We're probably going to use it straight away as we come in with our Shadow Dragonite. But what I'm hoping for is we can go for a full Dragon Breath farm down. And if we are able to get that farm down before they make it to a Sky Attack, we're going to make it to a superpower. Now you can see I'm actually running the wrong moves in this first battle. I'm still running Hurricane. Doesn't really matter for this battle as we're full sending the superpower. Then swapping into the Shadow Extra Jewel. And the final Pokemon is going to be Lantern. So things are looking absolutely amazing for us. I can safely shield up the Surf. I'm going to farm two back-to-back -back charge moves. I actually overhomed slightly more than that. It doesn't matter though. Drill Run will be taking out the Lantern there. I even undercharged that hoping to get extra energy. It doesn't really matter though. Drill Run number two. One shots the Shadow Steelix and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there into next game, we see Lantern in the lead and I think the other day I was watching a Dan Ottawa video and he said from the Lantern's perspective you can just go straight Surf in this matchup but I'm here to tell you that that is absolutely false. You can see Surf doesn't do much damage there and I will make it to back to back Dragon Claws before the opponent can go for a full Spark farm down. So we got the first shield there, we make it to Dragon Claw number 2 and I'm not certain if this would KO, honestly it might not but I grab both shields and both shields is super handy when we've got Shadow Extra Jewel here because Shadow Extra Duel with a shield advantage is such a devastating closer in this meta. Even Pokemon like Vigoroth are going to take like 80% damage from a drill run. So we go for the rock side there. That was just in case the opponent tries to play it smart and try and catch that onto like a flying type. I knew that both charge moves would KO. So yeah, they come in with the Vigoroth. That's fine. I can let the body slam go through. I'm still saving that shield for my Shadow Extra Drill. We can now go for a Mud Bomb. That is resisted damage, but it doesn't matter. It definitely puts them into range where one rock side will take them out here. So all I have to do is over. Farm. I'm going to be throwing on the CMP tie, and of course, Extra Drill going to be winning CMP in this matchup. Rockside takes out Bomber Snow. I'm able to make it to a drill run, and from this range, this is certainly going to be enough to take out the Vigoroth, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there into the next battle. We see Shadow Dragonite into Vigoroth. So the great thing about this team is that we're like ABA fairly strong up against Toxicroak, although, oh sorry, not Toxicroak, up against Vigoroth, but honestly, it's not the most uh, comfortable matchup, so actually I'm just going to grab a shield advantage. We did throw out poor timing there, I thought they'd just throw it on the CMP tie there. Doesn't really matter, they go and full center rock side. I'm gonna let that go through, come in with my Toxicroak. I'm hoping that with Vigoroth off the field, Excadrill can sweep very well in the end game here. The opponent comes in with a Bomber Snow, we're gonna fire off the Shadow Ball. This should be grabbing the final shield from the opponent, and now it is Excadrill time. We come in with the Excadrill, we still got both our shields remaining. Of course, I'm gonna have to shield pretty much anything anyways. They go for an Icy Wind, we try to throw on the CMP tie, nice catch from the opponent but it doesn't matter. There's a Lantern in the back and after they debuff my attack, I actually would have had to throw two charge moves anyway so it doesn't really make a difference. We're now going to fire off a drill run on the CMP tie and now all I have to do is make it to another Rock Side before the opponent makes it to back to back charge moves and Rock Side once again will be taken out of Bomber Snow and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next battle we see a Whiskash in the lead, so this is a pretty good matchup, although some Whiskash are running Blizzard in this meta, the opponent is going to swap out there, so probably not running Blizzard, otherwise maybe they would have stayed in, but either way we fire off a superpower, now typically I actually came in with my Toxicroak up against Skarmory just because we need two charge moves to get rid of the Skarmory with our Excadrill, whereas with Toxicroak the counter damage 
adds up so quickly that we put them into range where we can just fire off a mod bomb to get that KO. But here, the opponent is going to go for a charge move. We're now going to go and fire off a rock side. Could have over farmed slightly more than that and actually definitely should have done. The opponent does correctly over farm massively though in this matchup. Going for a mud bomb there to take us out. So at this point, we're going to wait out our switch clock here, come in with the Shadow Dragonite, and I will be no shielding whatever they throw. The opponent is going to throw just before we make it to the Dragon Claw, so very good timing. And the opponent is running Blizzard. It one-shots the Dragonite, and honestly, at this point, I was in absolute shambles. We go for a uh, Mud Bomb, sorry. This, of course, resists the damage. The opponent knows how to count, so they no shield, and this is just game over. So really well played by the opponent there. I honestly did not expect the Blizzard from that waste cash, but they're able to take that game. So GG's there, into next battle, we're going to see Lantern in the lead once again. So once again, just going to stay in this matchup. I'm not going to commit any shields here, especially when they do just fire off that Surf immediately. I can safely let the Surf go through, and once again, going to farm up two back-to-back -back Dragon Claws, but this time the opponent's going to say swap into Skarmory. So we're going to fire off a superpower here, grabbing a shield, and at this point, I don't want to switch lock myself. So I will just let the Dragonite go down. Going to come in with my extra drill once again. Now, Excadrill is very glassy, so what I was hoping for is the opponent would just full send a Brave Bird, expecting it to possibly KO despite being resisted. But the opponent does go for a Sky Attack. Doesn't really matter too much. Of course, they've got a Lantern, so I know Excadrill going to be pretty good up against that Lantern. We go for the Rock Side, taking out the Skarmory. And they come in with a Trevenant, so we're going to go straight for the Rock Side here, and then I'll be swapping straight away into my Toxicroak. We've got the final shield from the opponent. Toxicroak has the tools to beat the backline, but it just depends. We've got to be incredibly precise with the energy here. They put up full send Shadow Ball. We're going to over farm. We throw on the CMP tie. Perfect timing there. We actually go for a Sight on a charge there. It doesn't really make a difference. And now I will be able to outpace the Trevenant to the, to the Shadow Ball on the CMP tie, actually. Winning CMP, taking out the Trevenant and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Talonflame in the lead. So this is a pretty good lead matchup for the Shadow Dragonite. We will outpace them to the first charge move, and we will throw just before they make it to that charge move as well. So Dragon Claw coming through, gonna grab a shield here. I'm also gonna shield this. I don't typically shield in the lead matchup, but the opponent full sends a Brave Bird, then swaps into a Bomber Snow, and we're gonna respond with our Toxicroak. Now we were a little bit slow to swap out there. I'm gonna no shield the first charge move. They go for Weather Ball here. We're gonna over farm through the Mud Bomb at the last possible second just in case the opponent does decide to no shield and then come in with something else they're not going to get much farm but at this point we've put them into mod short farm down range which is perfect for the shadow escadrille because of course we're not really going to appreciate the incinerate damage but if we get a full mod shot farm down come out with a rock slide loaded then we don't care about the talent flame whatsoever we're going to see the opponent is going to come in with the talent flame we can safely go for one mod shot without taking any incinerate damage and fire off the rock side taking them out and they've got scrafty in the back so we can just swap it into our shadow dragon Dragonite, and we can go straight for a superpower. Superpower, one shot to Scrafty, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there. Internet's going to see Shadow Dragonite Mirror Match. So we're just going to stay in here. And one of the really weird inconsistencies is that you cannot simultaneous KO if both you and your opponent are running one turn fast moves. For whatever reason, one of them is just not going to go through. And unluckily, un unfortunately for me, it was my Dragon Breath that didn't go through. Meaning the opponent not only KO'd me, but they came out with a Dragon Claw loaded. So yeah, that was basically game over as soon as that happened. Nothing we could do about it, unfortunately. It is one of those inconsistencies that not really many people talk about and it's kind of annoying because I find it happens quite a lot and it seems to always happen against me which I certainly don't like of course but anyways this game is definitely over we're gonna no shield the body Sam it takes us out there after one more counter and unfortunately we do lose that game but GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Shadow Swampert in the lead. They're going to save swap into Skarmory, and this time you can see we are coming in with the Toxicroak. I'm definitely going to shield this first charge through Sky Attack. Would be enough damage to take us out, but I will be able to outpace them to back to back Mud Bombs. And you can see the counter damage is basically keeping pace with the Steel Wing damage here. And a Mud Bomb would KO at this point. We're actually able to grab the first shield from the opponent and then CMP tie them to the next charge move, and Mud Bomb grabs both shields. At this point, we've put them into range where we can actually come in with the Shadow Dragonite. 
and go for a full Dragon Breath farm down. And that is going to be very nice here as we will come out with a superpower and slightly more energy loaded. So the opponent comes in with the Swamp, but they try to make a catch onto their Steelix. It doesn't work out. So now we can full send the superpower. We put them into Mudshot farm down range. And also with the Dragon Breath damage, that Swamp is certainly in drill run range. So we let the move go through there. We make it to the drill run. And this is going to be massive overkill here. But drill run will be taken out the Shadow Swamp and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next game we see Shadow Dragonite into Mantine, so this is a little bit tricky, they could be running Ice Beam here, so I will shield if they do but if they do farm all the way up to the Ice Beam, but we can go and fire off a Dragon Claw before they get there, they're going to shield the first charge move and then they're going to throw straight away, so this obviously is not an Ice Beam, so I will be shield uh, no shielding, sorry, and then I'm going to try and swap and catch, no actually, I'm able to make it to a Dragon Claw before they make it to Ice Beam number 2, so at this point we can grab both shields from the opponent once again, I am going to shield this up here as the opponent's full sense the Ice Beam, which is fine with me. And then we are going to go and throw the Rock Side straight away. Rock Side, of course, will be taking out the Mantine from this range. And then they come in with a Clod Sire, and this is huge for me. Unfortunately, they are running Mud Shot and not Poison Sting. So instead of being triple resisted, the fast move damage is super effective. But also super effective is the Drill Run. It nearly one-shots the very bulky Clod Sire. We safely shield that up. We can now make it to a Drill Run up against the Vigoroth. This is once again going to do about 70% of their health. We can come in with the Toxicroak, go for the counter farm down, and the opponent just concedes the match there. So GG's to the opponent there, internet game, we see Whiskash in the lead once again, so last time we saw they full sent a Blizzard, this time they're also going to swap into their Skarmory, and once again, we're coming in with that Toxicroak, so we are going to shield this up here, as the opponent is once again going to go for a Sky Attack, and then we're just going to go and farm to the back-to-back -back Mud Bombs, throwing the first one here, this should either take out the Skarmory, or grab the first shield, the opponent actually lets that go through, and now we can full send a Shadow Ball, honestly, possibly should have gone for Mud Bomb here, just because we would be able to make it to another Mud Bomb before they farm us down, but unfortunately, because we full send the Shadow Ball there, they get quite a huge farm down. Now, we've seen already Blizzard easily one-shots us, so it'll be interesting to see if we do let this go through. But we are going to no shield, and it is just the school this time around. They debuff our attack, unfortunately, which isn't ideal. I'm going to no shield once again here. They put base with a mud bomb, and then they swap into Trevor, and they get the snipe. But I kind of need that Dragon Breath damage because one Rock Side will not KO. So here, I'm obviously going to use my final shield, and then I will farm and try and throw on the CMP tie with the next charge move here. So Rock Side unfortunately does not register. This is not a CMP tie because Extra Drill will always win CMP up against Trevenant, but unfortunately it doesn't register there, so we do end up losing that game. Which is such a shame there because if the Rock Side did KO, I felt like we were in a great position to just go for a draw run into the Wisp Cache and also take them out there. But either way, into next battle, we're going to see a Dragalgy in the lead. Honestly, I didn't expect them to throw straight away, but they did. Then we're going to come in with a Toxicroak, and we're actually going to double shield immediately here. So we are two shields down, but we can get a huge counter farm down, and let's see what the opponent wants to do. They're going to come in with Salazzle, which could be a bit scary for us, but we've got so much energy that I will make it to back-to-back -back Mud Bombs here. Unfortunately, not going to make it to a third mob bomb to take them out, but even the counter damage is really chunking this Salazzle. We get them close to the half health range already, and I'm fully expecting the opponent will just blind throw a Poison Fang. So we're going to come in with the extra drill, and this is triple resisted. It's not going to do much damage at all. And now we can come in with the Shadow Dragonite Snipe with a Dragon Claw. This will, of course, be taking out this Salazzle, and I will be able to very, very closely Dragon, t uh, Dragon Breath farm them down there, and I'm able to take that game. So GG to the opponent there, internet's going to see Talonflame in the lead, they're going to say swap into a Bomber Snow, so we respond with our Toxicroak. Now, I should have thrown the Mud Bomb there, honestly I didn't anticipate them over farming as much as they did, so now we will throw because this is a CMP tie, we win CMP of course, Mud Bomb will be taking them out here. I think I should live a weather ball here, but it will be very, very close, and we do just barely hang on, we get a simultaneous KO, which isn't really ideal for us, but then the opponent comes in straight away with the Talon Flame, so that's absolutely fine. We can make sure we align it to our Shadow Dragonite, and this way we can probably grab the final shield, and then of course Rockside would KO if it does come to it. But here I'm going to shield this up. The opponent is going to go for a Flame Charge bait, boosting up their attack, and honestly, I get too greedy. I thought I could get that Dragon Breath farm down. Maybe if the opponent didn't get the new mechanic, we could have got there, but unfortunately they've got Vigoroth in the back, and we've seen a few times this does between like 70 and 80% of their health. 
health, but it isn't quite enough damage to one-shot a Vigor off. So the opponent can go for a Body Slam here. This also won't KO, but one more counter will do the job, and unfortunately we do lose that game because we get just too greedy up against the Talonflame. But GG's to the opponent there, instant next game we see Altaria in the lead, so we do lose this matchup, but I will win in the Zero Shield scenario, so just gonna stay in, fire off a Dragon Claw, the opponent gonna shield that up there, and that's absolutely fine with me. We can now come in with the extra shield, and unfortunately we are very glassy, so I'm still gonna shield this anyways, but we are at least resisting the Dragon Breath damage. I'm now gonna over farm here, throwing on what looks to be a CMP die, so Rockside coming through, it will be taking out the Altaria here, and they come in with a Toxic Rogue, and because we over farm, I'm able to make it to a draw run here, grab the final shield, and now we can swap into our own Toxicroak. I'm definitely gonna be shielding this up here, but hopefully they have something weak to the Toxicroak in the back, and they do. It's a Ferrothorn, so I'm gonna overfarm, throw just before they make it to a Power Whip. Power Whip is resisted, but I can't really take the risk there. We can take them out with the Shadow Ball, and I'm still able to outpace the opposing Toxicroak to a Mud Bomb, and of course, this will be taken out the Toxicroak, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next battle, we're going to see a Lantern in the lead. So once again, going to play this out exactly the same. Actually, no, never mind, they're running Water Gun, so this is even better for us. And especially with Water Gun, you definitely shouldn't just go straight for the Surf. It doesn't make an awful lot of sense, but they're going to swap into a Bomber Snow. I'm able to spot that a mile away, so we can full send the Superpower, one-shotting a Bomber Snow. They come back in with the Lantern, we're only making it to a Dragon Claw here. Honestly, I expect it's going to be Vigoroth in the back. I've seen a lot of backlines with both a Bomber Snow and Vigoroth, so I'm just going to come in with my Toxic Croak, you could argue that there was no real reason for me to swap out of the matchup there, as we only had 1 HP on the Dragonite, but it clearly was a Vigoroth in the back, as the opponent just concedes the match. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next battle, another Altaria in the lead. So once again, I'm actually going to over farm here, just in case the opponent tries to catch that Dragon Claw if I throw it straight away. But we can go for the Dragon Claw, grab the Shield Advantage, and once again, just come in with our Shadow Extra Drill. Unfortunately, I think they've got a little bit too much health for me to farm them down with counters on my Toxic Rope before they make it to back-to-back -back Sky Attacks. But once again, going to shield the first Charge Reef here. This time, I don't think I'm going to over farm quite as much. Actually, no, I think I do farm up exactly the same. Either way, we can go for the Rock Side. Rock Side takes out the Altaria, they come in with the Anovan Stunfisk, so we're going straight for the Troll Run, and the fact that they come in with Stunfisk here makes me think that Toxicroak should still be okay up against their backline, so I'm actually not going to shield in this position here, I let the Mud Bomb go through, we come in with our Toxicroak, and the opponent will outpace me to the next charge move. But that's fine, I'm going to overfarm here, but unfortunately they've got Mandibuzz in the back. And this is one of the worst matchups for Toxicroak because Mud Bomb and Shadow Ball are both resisted. I'm going to fire off the Shadow Ball here anyways, just to see how much damage it does do. You can see it doesn't do much damage there, but just in case we need it in, in a future matchup there, up against a lower health Mandibuzz, it is good to know how much damage it does. But either way, the opponent's able to take me out there with the Mandibuzz, but GG's to that opponent. Into the next game, we see Whiskash in the lead, so we're just going to stay in here, and the opponent is going to throw straight away, so this is just going to be a Scald. They don't even farm up to the potential Blizzard. Scald is actually going to get a debuff, though, which is unfortunate, which means I actually don't think a Dragon Claw would quite take them out. So we go for the Superpower, grabbing a shield from the opponent, and they're going to throw a Charge Move straight away. Now, this is actually just a Mud Bomb, because I debuffed my defense, that actually does take me out there, which is a bit unfortunate, but that's okay. We're going to come in with the Toxicroak, go for the full counter farm down. They do make it to another Mud Bomb, but that's fine. As long as it isn't a school and it debuffs my attack, we're looking pretty good here. And they come in with a Talon Flame. So I'm going to fire off the Shadow Ball, and then I will be swapping straight away into my Shadow Extra Drill. The opponent is not going to fire off a Charge Move. Instead, coming in with the Greninja. And I realize my win condition is just farming two back to back Charge Moves. Honestly, I could farm two one away from the back to back moves there, but it doesn't really matter. We can go straight for the Drill Run, one shot in Greninja, and we've got the Rock Side already loaded. And Rock Side, of course, double super effective, easily one shots the town of flame and i'm able to take that game so gg so opponent there internet's gonna see quagsire in the lead so this is a little bit of a tricky matchup here but if we do correctly shield up the stone edges then it's actually a very comfortable matchup because of course these mud shots are doing almost no damage whatsoever the opponent is going to shield the first dragon claw so i'm actually going to respect the damage and the opponent full sends the stone edge there so good call we can now go and fire off another dragon claw here and this should be taken out the quagsire so you might see the opponent double shields there i'm now going to swap catch the move onto my toxic croak and this is going to be a second stone edge which is resist damage but maybe that wasn't the brightest play as the opponent comes in with a mantine they're going to get a full fire down just before we make it to the Shadow Ball. I have to settle for a Mod Bomb, but unfortunately that does very little damage, so 
That's definitely not ideal. We're going to come in with the extra drill, though, and I'm just going to shield the first charge move. They have enough for a water pulse or an ice beam. They fire off the ice beam, and then they just throw an aerial ace straight away, which is perfectly fine with me. What this is now going to do is allow me to over farm here. I can now farm two back to back charge moves before I have to throw, which is really nice as a rock side will be taken out of Mantine. They come back in with the Quagsire. I can now over farm throwing on the CMP die, going for the drill run. Drill run will be taken out of the Quagsire, and they've got a decidual in the back so I'm gonna bank a rock side then swap into my shadow dragonite and this is just just gonna seal the matchup for me dragon claw doesn't quite take them out there but even if they KO me with whatever they throw it doesn't matter as the extra drill has a charge move loaded but spirit shackle is a pretty awful move there so it doesn't take us out and we're able to get the dragon breath farm down and take that game but into the next battle we see a bomber snow in the lead the opponent's gonna swap well, respond to my say swap with a lantern and we can go straight from my bomb here and honestly i was a bit thrown off by the fact that the opponent no shields here i was hoping to grab a shield advantage in this matchup but instead it's the opponent that grabs the shield advantage from me and actually i'm kind of confused as to what to do at this point we're now going to full send the shadow ball here possibly should have just gone for the mud bomb but it doesn't really matter i'm making it to two charge moves anyways but they will get a huge resisted vine farm down which i certainly do not like so of course they're gonna have a ton of energy shadow drive Dragonite should live a sludge bomb. I might try and make a catch here, but I'm not able to make the catch. I think I was expecting them to over farm by one more fast move. Doesn't really matter. We come in with the extra drill. All shields are down on the opponent's end here, but we are going to shield up. The opponent goes for energy ball. That completely threw me off as well. Not really sure why they needed to go for that, but now we are not going to over farm as much as we possibly could. We go for the rock side here, but the opponent had back to back charge moves when they threw the sludge bomb there. So Frenzy Plant will be taking out the extra drill. They're able to double resisted vine whip farm down my shadow dragonite and they're able to take that game so gg's to the opponent really well played into the next battle we see skarmory in the lead so i'm gonna say swap into my toxic croak and we're just gonna fire off a mod bomb straight away now if the opponent no shields we put them into range where we can just counter farm them down. The opponent recognizes that, so they actually shield the first charge move. And at this point, we've got a shield advantage. I'm actually pretty happy with that. So we're going to wait till the Switch Club come in with our Shadow Dragonite. And I'm also going to no shield from the Swampert here. I'm thinking it could be something like a double Mud Boy backline. So in this case, we want to save our shields for the Shadow Extra Drill. We get a huge farm down there. Let's see if they come back in with the Skarmory. And they are going to come in with the Skarmory. So we go straight for the Superpower. And then I will immediately swap into my Shadow Extra Drill. They let that go through that does big damage and it is a second mud boy this time it's a whisk catch and things are looking pretty decent here we go straight for the draw run they shield the first move of course if they get a school debuff then it's not going to be ideal and that is why they shield the first one but they don't get the debuff and now that is absolutely huge for me we can just go straight for a draw run number two draw run does big damage and it will put them into range where we can just dragon breath farm them down i realize i've still got a fairly healthy shadow dragonite there so we're going to go for the dragon breath farm down and i will be able to make it to another superpower up against the Skarmory and of course this is range where superpower takes out the Skarmory and I'm able to take that game. So GG to the opponent there into next game we see Shadow Dragonite into Altaria so this once again we're just going to play out this match up here play out the zero shields well I'm obviously not going to shield because they're not even going to make it to a charge move before they fully Dragon Breath farm me down. But Dragon Claw will be grabbing a shield from the opponent. It looks like they might have lagged there or maybe they just stopped attacking for a brief second. But either way, that's actually going to put them into mod shot farm down range for my Shadow Extra Drill. Once again, we are very glassy, so I will respect the damage. The opponent full sends a Dazzling Gleam though, which means they're definitely not making it to another Sky Attack. And at this point, we are going to see that the opponent's going to come in with a Lantern, which is huge for me. We can go straight for the drill run. Drill run gonna do huge damage to the lantern. I'm not certain I could have got the mud shot farm down, so we swap into Toxicroak, and they've got Toxapex in the back, so their back line was absolutely gonna get destroyed by a loaded extra drill. But we play it safe anyways. We come in with the Toxicroak. We make it to back-to-back -back mud bombs before they even throw a charge move. Doesn't really matter at this point. Mud bomb will just certainly put them into range where drill run will KO. We're gonna no shield. Brian will not quite take us out there. Not sure if they charged or if that did just not do enough damage to take us out but it doesn't matter draw run easily takes out the toxapex and i'm able to take that game 
So GG, still up home there into the next game. We see Wigglytuff in the lead, so possibly the only like really bad lead for Shadow Dragonite, other than maybe a Steelix. Well, at least with Steelix, you have that super power for coverage. But anyways, we're gonna go straight for the Shadow Ball. The opponent no shields. And the incinerate doesn't take us out there, so we're actually able to get a simultaneous KO. This is just a 50-50 gambling game right now. We come in with the Dragonite, and unfortunately, it's the wrong call. If we came in with the extra drill, I think we'd have been fine. Unfortunately, as well, I end up committing to the superpower, not getting there. If I threw the Dragon Claw, we might put them into Mudshot Farm downrange, in all honesty. But unfortunately, because we did end up throwing, well, not throwing anything there, we're still going to have to fire off a charge move to get rid of the Wigglytuff. And yeah, this is certainly game over. I need something incredibly weak to the extra drill in the back. That also does like no fast move damage whatsoever. We're going to fire off drill run number two, taking out the Wigglytuff, and it's an Altaria in the back. So honestly, if we just threw that Dragon Claw, got the Mudshot farm down, even with a debuff to our attack, Rockside does about 50% of the Altaria's health. I could have been able to win that game there, but unfortunately we didn't. And obviously as well, if we just came in with the extra drill up against the Wigglytuff, then we'd have been fine as well. But anyways, into next battle, we see Tentacruel in the lead. I'm calling that they're just going to go straight for an Acid Spray, since of course they only farmed up two of the acid spray we can now come in save the energy on our dragonite come in with the toxic croak fire off a mod bomb i'm gonna shield here the opponent is gonna go and fire off a second acid spray and then they come in with chestnut so clearly toxic croak is a huge core breaker to their team which is why they went for the acid spray making sure a superpower would take us out there but that's fine, they debuff their defense, which is going to allow me to take them out with a Dragon Claw here. So we're going to fire off the Dragon Claw as they make their next charge move. They actually shield that up, and that's absolutely fine as we make it to back-to-back -back Dragon Claws. Second one takes out the Chestnaw. They come in with a Shadow Aerodactyl, but it doesn't matter. We've got our extra drill. We can go straight for the Rock Side, and Rock Side will very easily one-shot the Aerodactyl. And now they've just got a Tentacle in the back, so the opponent just concedes the match there. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shout outs at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day